Messi. Alabama set to kick off at Legion Field in Birmingham with Alan McElroy teeing it up. LSU sending three men back deep with their fullback in the I formation, Hoki Gaijan. The man in the middle, we're underway at Birmingham, and it's Gaijan taking it two yards deep and coming out. Back of Mumphrey to the 10, the 15, and tripped up for the 20-yard line. The LSU Tigers will start from there with David Woodley, the junior quarterback, with Charles Alexander at tailback, the Heisman candidate. Hoki Gajan, who just ran back the kick, is the fullback out of Baton Rouge. The split back is Mike Quintella, number one, and the speed merchant is number three, Carlos Carson, the junior split end. So from the 20-yard line, LSU, six and one on the season, three and one in the Southeastern Conference. Smigger gets the start at quarterback. So Woodley is in the game. Guys on. Carries for 10 or 11 out to the 31-yard line as we look at the men who will lead the way. Chris Richard, left tackle. William Johnson, the left guard from Athens, Texas. Jay Whitley is the center. These are the men who paved the way for Alexander and company. Johnson at right guard. And Dugas, he is a good one. The senior right tackle with Cliff Lane, number 80, the tight end. Gajan picked up the first down. First and 10, LSU from the 31-yard line. Ensminger was in the quarterback on the first play. Now it is Woodley giving the ball to Alexander, and he takes it out to the 34-yard line. So Alexander's first carry of the day, and that's three or four. Mike Sebastian made the stop. And defensively for the Crimson Tide. A good unit up front, five-man front. Marty Lyons, a fine tackle, number 93. E.J. Jr. on the outside, number 39. The linebackers, Krause is exceptional. He'll make several All-America teams. Number 77, McNeil, Crumbly, Leg, and Ricky Tucker, the secondary. Second down and seven. And again, it is Charles Alexander looking to the, the first side of the field and bottled up at the 33-yard line by Barry Krause, number 77. Bear Bryant in his 21st year at Alabama. We isolate here on Krause now. One of the great linebackers that's played for three years, Barry Krause, comes in here. He's wiping off from the right side. One of the great football players that Alabama has had. And if, interestingly enough, LSU came right out, right out with a gadget trying to make Alabama think they were going to throw a pass. Here they are again with a different formation. They send Quintella wide to the right on third down and eight. Woodley rolling right, under pressure, touched inside, starts to look downfield and carries it out to the 36-yard line, but the Tigers will have to kick. So Alabama holding after giving up an initial first down, and now the Tigers will have to punt it away to the Tide. Well, the pregame uh, information that we had so far is holding true that uh, LSU would use a lot of formations, a lot of gadgets, and Alabama, on the other hand, is going to button up and crystallize and try to keep from making any errors and run simple plays. Let's see if this follows the pattern. The punter is John Adams, averaging 43 yards a kick. Tony Nathan drops back as the single safety for Alabama. Low kick that bounces at the 26-yard line, moving laterally and down at the 24. Alabama coming out for the first time offensively. At the 24-yard line, the Crimson Tide to take over there. No score, early first quarter. Alabama LSU in Birmingham with the Tigers trying to beat the Tide for the first time since 1970. Jeff Rutledge is the quarterback. Alabama, of course, in the wishbone with Nathan, the left halfback, their leading ball carrier, number 22. Rutledge under pressure, dumps it off, and is fortunate it wasn't intercepted. Instead of eating it, he threw it away. He was pressured by Kent Broha. And we've got a penalty marker down. Well, he grounded the ball. He, Rutledge is trying to say that there was an eligible receiver in the area, and the official's judgment uh, is that he was on his way down and he was trying to protect negative yardage. Good call. Robert I.A. is the referee today. As we look at the Alabama backfield, Rutledge is the quarterback. Tony Nathan averaging almost eight yards a carry at one halfback spot. Steve Whitman, number 45, the junior fullback. Major Ogilvy is the other halfback. As you can see, the running backs are all from Birmingham. The split end is number four, Keith Hugh. 
He is set to the right. Breaks the tackle, gets out past the 20 to the 21 yard line where James Britt, the freshman cornerback, number 11, makes the stop. Buddy Adelet, the senior left tackle. Mike Brock at left guard. The men up front for Alabama. Dwight Stevenson is the center. And this is the team that is number one in rushing in the Southeastern Conference. Vince Booth at right guard. The right tackle is a good one. For Mechanicsville, Virginia, Jim Bunt. Rick Neal, number eight, is the tight end. It is third down and 13 from the 22-yard line for the tie. Nathan, his first carry of the day. He gets out to the 25-yard line. So LSU holds. Bama will have to kick it away. Lime and White made the tackle for the Tigers. Well, that negative yardage uh, really put him in a hole. And uh, in the early going thus far with the two great running backs, Alexander for LSU and Nathan for Alabama, who hasn't had, had an opportunity to show much yet. But those two people will be very instrumental in the outcome of this game. Looks like they're coming after it. Now they're returning. Woody Upgrade, the left-footed kicker. Kick taken back at the 34 yard line by Chris Williams, and he brings it back to the 43. The Tigers will start from their own 43 yard line. We are four minutes into the game in Birmingham, LSU, nothing, Alabama, nothing. The man they call Charlie Mac Charlie McClendon, 17 beer at LSU. His Tigers, six and one, three and one in the Southeastern Conference. And they have the ball at the 42-yard line. Carlos Carson is split wide to the right. LSU operating out of the eye with Alexander the tailback. And Charles goes in motion. After the long count, it's John John, the fullback, who's bottled up at the 45-yard line. Barry Krause is in there, number 77. And Ricky Gilliland, number 92. And we'll isolate on the linebackers. Well, see here, uh, the linebackers filling in here, what LSU is trying to do is to try to distort the yeah, offensive well, formation, to try to get Alabama to go out wide for coverage, and but they stayed right in there that time and made the play. Final big game at Jacksonville, Georgia. Hung on to win it. Deep Florida, 24-22. Stay unbeaten in the conference. On second down and seven. Woodley on a deep drop. The guy's on into Alabama territory. And out of bounds. At the 39-yard line, Murray Leg, number 19, made the stop. That's only the third pass he's caught. They've only thrown to him on two previous occasions, or at least reception-wise. But uh, this is one of the things that LSU has done in the last three games. They've started to throw to their backs, and they've been very successful with it. Alexander, for instance, has caught 19 passes this season, though 11 of those in one game <laughs> against Kentucky. <laughs> right. First down, Tigers at the Alabama 40-yard line. Guy John, nothing there. There's Krause again. He's been in on nearly every play. Wayne Hamilton also there, number 94, from his left-hand spot. Pick up a one. It'll be second down and nine. Yeah, it looked like Barry Krause might have smelled something in there. He's playing that left linebacker, and he stuck his nose right up into the line, and that's exactly where they were running, and he shut it down. No score. Five minutes into the game. LSU in second possession. It is second down and nine. They give it to Alexander. He's got a little bit of room. He's got the 35, the 30, and down to the 25-yard line. Alexander. Alan Crumbly, number 17, made the tackle of first down as we isolate on Charles Alexander, the senior tailback. Great draw play, great call in a passing situation. You see Alexander, here's where you see the acceleration. He comes through the hole, here he makes a defender miss. Well, he just gets, he trips him up, but he's a kind of back that is very strong and can also make a hit. Many of you saw him last week. He had a fine day against Mississippi, rushed for 147 yards. On first down, we've got a flag, and Guy John picks up about four to the 22-yard line. Mike Sebastian, 71, making the stop. So we've got a motion call. Yeah, motion call on LSU. They had a pretty good drive going here. These penalties can really change the complexion of the drive, force you to do things you don't want to do. But still, they've got a first down situation to come up with. They'll have first and 15 instead of that first and 10. 
You know, our last week, Mississippi State, they lost the game, but they had marvelous success in the air. They passed 456 yards against Alabama, worked out of the shotgun all day. I'm wondering if Charlie McClendon might not take a page out of the Mississippi State book this week. <laughs> That's a very good question, Al. It's very likely that we will. I'll guarantee you that uh, LSU saw the film. In addition to that, Alabama knows they did, and you may see some shotgun today. With flip backs now on first and 15 from the 31 yard line. Quarterback draw, Woodley keeps it, gets down to the 25 yard line. Woodley, just about the original line of scrimmage. Marty Lyons, number 93, a senior from St. Petersburg, Florida, the fine defensive left tackle. Making the stop. Uh, Charlie Mack told me, uh, Charlie McClendon, the coach at LSU, that he felt that maybe they could read some of the Alabama defensive coverages and they might be doing some audibleizing. I don't think that last play was, but the quarterback draw is an excellent play when the linebackers are man-to-man -man, and they run off with the receivers and then the quarterback is wide open and uncovered. They go back to the eye now on second down and 10 from the Bama 26-yard line. Alexander, something in the middle. Bunched up at the 25-yard line, Ricky Gilliland, right in the middle, number 92. With that carry, Charles Alexander has just set a new SEC career record. Most rushes, 778. So he is a man who has certainly earned his scholarship. Well, if the form holds true here, he, you'll see him with the ball about 30 times this afternoon, providing, of course, LSU has, uh, manages to maintain possession of it. And there's an interesting note. Alexander, a touchdown in 10 straight games. Yet in his career, he has never scored a touchdown against the tie. It's third down and nine. Woodley has time. He has a man open, complete, and in for the score. Carlos Carson, number three, got open on the near side, and LSU breaks out on top. what happened on this play it's interesting they went to an unbalanced line and rolled out to the field which gave Woodley additional protection and he hit Carlos right on the numbers here he came down and hooked up turned to the inside or the outside and got all the way to the end zone that young guy has scored a few touchdowns I'll tell you Woodley's third touchdown pass of the season Mike Conway's extra point attempt is good and so on their second possession the LSU Tigers Move in for the score, and we have Carson, number three, isolated for the touchdown. He's a remarkable receiver. As a matter of fact, the first time, five times he caught the ball when he was a freshman, he scored touchdowns. He just comes down, stops, reads the zone coverage, then works away from the defender and gets into the end zone. So we're halfway through the first quarter. Seven and a half minutes to play in period number one. The Tigers lead by seven. There's the man who put six up on the board for LSU, Carlos Carson. Back on the bench, seven plays, 58 yards in a shade over three minutes. It's seven nothing Tigers, and Conway's kick is taken by Heister at the six, to the 15, the 20, and then out to the 25-yard line. The Tigers get up for the second time offensively now. Bill Farrell made the tackle on the run back. So first down, Alabama at the 25-yard line. Seven and a half minutes to play. First quarter, seven to nothing, LSU. That return was pretty well set up from upstairs looking down. But it would only taken a block or two, and he could have gone a long way. Alabama coming up in the familiar wishbone. Nathan is the left halfback. Number 22, Major Ogilvy, the right halfback, 42. And they give it to the fullback, Whitman. Number 45, Thad Minoldi, the linebacker for LSU, former running back, made the tackle. Minimal gain, yard, yard and a half, call it second down. Also was selected as one of the co-captains along with Alexander, which is a new precedent for LSU. He's very good at the end of the year. Minoldi gave up a lot as an offensive running back, and he's a great linebacker. They split the tight end, Neal, to the right. Pugh is split to the left. On second down and eight, Rutledge to Whitman again. And Whitman takes it out to the 30-yard line. Benji Thibodeau three yards on the play. made the stop. Pickup of three, third down and five. 
LSU's got two great defensive advantage, too. They may force Rutledge to uh, keep handing the ball inside or make a runner out of him because they both have size and quickness and speed. Adams and White, let's watch for them this afternoon. They send Ogilvy to the right as Bama comes up in the eye. Third down and five. Rutledge, before he gets blindsided, gets it away to Whitman. And he's out to the 40-yard line for the first down. Good call. I think they expected a man-to-man -man coverage, but it still worked out against the zone. Whitman just checked through like he had waited right along with the lineman, and then he slipped through. Watch Whitman right here, number 45. He fakes inside, and he's right in there with the lineman. He fights his way through. Nobody's on him, and they're back in the zone. He catches the ball for a first down. Good call. Alabama at its own 40-yard line. First and 10, 7 nothing LSU, first quarter. Rutledge keep it and then hit from behind after a pickup of two. Lyman White came around to get him, number 94. And so it'll be second down and eight. Well, that's, uh, that's the kind of play. Lyman White came from the backside, but he has to watch himself because the next thing you know, when they see ends making trailing plays, you see a misdirection coming. So, so we may see that from Alabama. The aerial figures on Rutledge hitting 50% of his passes. Coming in, second down, eight. Alabama from the 42-yard line. Rutledge to Nathan. Tony takes it out to the 46. Lyman White makes the tackle. Nathan gets a lot of publicity, number 22. He's a very fine running back. You really wonder, though, what he would do were he in LSU's position and operating out of an eye formation, a team that works the eye. He could be a tailback and probably pick up over 1,000 yards. Very true. That was discussed extensively this week. Nathan's a great back, 207 pounds. He doesn't have the speed of Alexander, but I'll tell you, he's a good one. He'll stick his nose and block, too. Whitman out to the 50-yard line. And a first down. Steve Whitman, a junior from Birmingham. So first down. Alabama. I tell you, the crowd here has been used up all day. A lot of them had portable televisions, and naturally they were rooting for Nebraska to beat Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, they were actually counting the clock down in Lincoln here in Birmingham. <laughs> That's right. Of course, it was Nebraska beating Oklahoma 17 to 14. At the 49-yard line, first and 10, Alabama. Nathan. Nathan down to the 45. Dad Minoldi tripping him up there. The amazing Paul William Bear Bryant. 33 years a head coach. This is his 34th. His 21st in Alabama. During his career, only one losing season. His first year at Texas A&M. Incredible record. Everything else on the plus side. Second down and six. Alabama from the 45-yard line as Nathan carries for another four or 85. Close to the 40-yard line. Setting up third down and short. Benji Thibodeau made the tackle. We're just staying with the basic plays. With a fullback and a halfback, a second back through. Very few options thus far. And uh, I think that they do not want to make mistakes. Even though they're behind now, they're staying with their game plan. Nathan has carried four times for 15 yards. It is third down and two from the 41-yard line. It is Nathan again. He's got the first down. Inside the 35. Stopped at about the 32 by Lyman White, number 94. Alabama on the move. He hadn't, Lyman White hadn't tripped him up. He was going for the goal line. He just stumbled, and he had clear sailing all the way. You can take another look at it from the end zone. The second back. You see Rutledge fakes to Whitman. Gives the ball to Nathan. Reaches him, just trips him up here. And he's got full goal line ahead of him. He had tripped, hadn't fell. Alabama first down at the LSU 32. LSU leads 7-0. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. Ogilvy, nothing there. Down to the 30-yard line. Looked like George Cupid was in there. He was. Ogilvy, number 34. He came underneath. I think he submarined underneath there and met it well. Here we are right here with a, another look at it. He's coming in to fill the hole, and he goes down underneath right there, avoids the block, and makes the play. Second down, nine from the 31. Nathan, back to Rutledge. He's going to throw, looking for Pugh, and it is knocked down, incomplete at the goal line. 
The pass was underthrown. Keith Pugh momentarily had a step on Chris Williams, but Williams able to recover and knock it away. It was just a, a pitch out here. Then Rumlich comes back. Nathan gives it back to him, and they try to beat their best defend, defender, Chris Williams, and they were not able to do it. Williams has six interceptions, and that could have been a tie and would have gone to the Alabama team. Here you see... Um, Keith Pugh going down the sideline, and Williams is right there. He has great speed, great punt return man. Almost came down in his hands, but it was a play that was an almoster and goes back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and nine. Alabama at the Tiger 31. We've got a flag and a delay of game coming up against Alabama. That'll cost them five and make it third down and 14. Oh, wow. Back to the 36. Boy, those are tough penalties. <laughs> Nine you can pick up, and 14 changes the strategy on it. It also takes you out of field goal range. The layup The Bear now. Looks like Bama comes up third down, 14 at the 36 yard line. 7 0 LSU late in the first quarter. Rutledge. Over the middle, and there intercepted by Williams. He's got his seventh of the oh, season, he's gone. and he may be gone. The 40, the 50, he's got one man to beat. Inside the 30, the 20, he's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Tigers. Put a marker down at the 29-yard line. Penalty marker back at the 29 of LSU. Flipping. Nullifies the touchdown. during the course of the year. So they'll bring it back. The clipping call, the flag dropped at the 29-yard line. So instead of a two-touchdown lead, it is still 7 to nothing LSU. And they'll march off the penalty, and the Tigers will take over deep in their own territory. Well, that's a big break for the Tide. They would have gone behind. They'd gone behind 14 to nothing if they'd have kicked the extra point. It was a great interception. Actually, the ball wasn't that poorly thrown. It was really not that poorly thrown. Rutledge did a good job here. He comes back. He throws the ball, but Williams does a fantastic job of stepping in front of him. Look at that. He is really quick. And of course, he runs it exceptionally well. He avoids another tackler right here, Rutledge himself, and on into the end zone, but it's all for naught. He goes right back down. There's another look at him on an isolation. Just watch him come right over top. Look at that interception. That is a tremendous defensive play. It was not Rutledge's fault. Now look at him come back here and weave to the backside. Get some good blocking. And then a Rutledge makes a last attempt here, coming clear across the field. And Williams avoids him and into the end zone. So LSU will take over deep in its own territory. Two minutes to go in the quarter. 7-0 Tigers. All right, see if you can find the clip here now on the run back by Williams. Taking a look here, let's see, there's very difficult to see that there's any clip. I don't know which one he called. I don't see anything right there. May have been out of the picture. But a flag came out of a tangle of bodies, and so LSU is denied a touchdown. They start from the 15-yard line, and Charles Alexander goes to the left side and is ridden out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Barry Krause is there again, number 77. From another angle now, let's see if you can detect the clip. Let's see now. Here comes... There it is right there, 37. That was the defensive secondary. That's Willie uh, Teal. Yeah, Willie Teal, he's free safety. Yeah, that, that was a good call. We finally got it from that angle. Teal clipping the intended receiver, Keith Pugh, and costing LSU six. So at the 20 yard line, it is second down, five. Alexander again. And after the 23 yard line, again, 
One of those defensively in on the play is number 77, Barry Krause, all over the field. Uh, he's one of the great linebackers that Alabama's ever had. Barry Krause. I remember in the Liberty Bowl. Here he is making another tackle on Alexander. Intercepted a ball in the Liberty Bowl to turn the game around against UCLA a couple of years ago and went all the way with it. He's made countless number of tackles. He's number two on the ball club. He's had negative yardage of 24 yards and 85 involvement. Third down and two. Tigers from the 23-yard line. One more time, it's Alexander, and he gets out just shy of the 25. Going to be very close to a first down. Let's see how they mark it, uh, Al. I think they moved it back a little bit. They did. They did. That's going to cost them a first down, too. Wow, that was close. They are shy of the first down by inches. He's asking for a measurement, I think. We have 59 seconds to go in the first quarter. A touchdown pass to Carlos Carson. Gave LSU a 7-0 lead earlier in the period. And shy of a first down, LSU can't gamble this early in the game. And they'll have to kick it away. So Charlie McClendon sends in the punting unit. John Adams to kick for the second time today. Tony Nathan drops back as a single safety for the tie at the 32-yard line. There's a little favoring wind here. Uh-oh. Look out. Adams gets the kick away. I think he got a piece of it. And I do, too, because we have no flag, and it's dead at the 42-yard line. So the tide will take over it there. I don't know how he missed that ball. He was right on top of it. Let's take a, re a replay look at it. Let's see where he comes in right. Look at he's right on top of the ball. I don't see how he missed that. Don McNeil, number 28, was the man who came charging in. So the short kick gives Alabama possession at the 43-yard line. First and 10. Gain of four. Coming up, a special Sunday edition NFL football. What a matchup. The Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Rams. The Steelers are nine and one. The Rams are eight and two. Then Monday night football. Oakland against Cincinnati. Oakland in a tie for first place in the AFC West trying to maintain it. Second down and five. With Stedman Sealy in at quarterback number 10, replacing Rutledge. Billy Jackson, the ball carrier. Bama, very deep in running backs. That'll be the final play of the first quarter. And Bear Bryant utilizing his second string at the moment as time expires in the first period at Birmingham. So at the end of the first quarter, it is LSU 7 and Alabama. You look at the markers, it's third down and a short four coming up for Alabama as we start the second quarter. The tie at midfield, LSU leading seven to nothing. Sedman Sheely, the quarterback, after Rutledge had played most of the first quarter. Third down, a short four. They pitch it to Nathan. Tony needs some room, tries to cut back, doesn't find any. They'll probably have to kick it away. He got a yard, yard and a half. Tommy Frizzell made the tackle along with Ivan Phillips, number 68. They ran right into the strength to the uh, defensive formation where their strong safety, Marcus Quinn, was located. And Nathan didn't really have much of a chance. They put immediate pressure on Steely right here. He deals the ball off to Nathan, and Nathan does not have much of a chance. Here's Marcus Quinn all the way across the field, even though he doesn't make the tackle. On a fake punt, it is Humphrey throwing to number 30, Lou Eichner for a first down at the 29-yard line. So Alabama taking a page out of Charlie McClendon's book and going to the gadget and fooling the Tigers. Well, I'll tell you, that is a great call. There it is right here. Ball is snapped. He fakes it. And he throws one to Lou Eichner right between two defenders. And it's first down for the tie. Alabama at the LSU 29-yard line after stunning the Tigers. Sheely, he's open. 10, 5, and in for the score. Bear Bryant, the calmest.
Swiss fan in Legion Stadium, which has erupted in Birmingham. Stedman Sheely came down the line, made to the fullback, found a real opening, took it. I've liked him for the last two years, although he came off a knee surgery. He looks like he's really well now. Sheely scores his third touchdown of the season. Alan McElroy's extra point attempt. We've got a penalty marker down. The kick is good, but a flag. Early in the second quarter. And we'll see about the call here. It is a procedure penalty, apparently, against Alabama. Well, I'll do it again, I guess. Procedure against the tie. Moves the line of scrimmage back to the eight. And they'll have to set it up at the 15 as you look at the man who put six on the board for the tie. Stedman Sheely, the number two quarterback. Levi Rutledge going in for the score. McElroy with Kevin Jones holding at the 15-yard line. The kick is good. No flags this time. And so the tie has tied it up. Now you can see the importance of that pump pass situation to maintain possession of it. Here's another look at the touchdown play. Sheely comes back, fakes the ball to Jackson, steps around a good block by the lead blocker, which was Nathan. Here he comes. He sees the daylight, steps inside. The corner, Williams comes up to protect the trailing man, and you look at him turn it on for the score. Well executed play. 13.57 to go in the first half. We're tied at seven. Hokey Gaijan, number 47, back at the goal line. Deep for LSU to receive the kick. Early in the second quarter, Alabama 7, LSU 7. Alan McElroy, who tied the game with the extra point. Kicking off for Bama. Gaijan moves to his right, fields at the goal line. The 10. And stopped out at the 17 and a flag down. Well, Guy John is a 217 pounder. He doesn't look like it, but I if he'd have just moved to his right there, there was a hole there that would have taken him up the field pretty well. Ducking in some scores, you can see, of course, it was Nebraska, number four, at Lincoln, defeating Oklahoma. Penn State had a tough time today, but pulled it out against North Carolina State as the Cowboys march on against LSU here. USC and Washington in a big one in the Pac-10. No score. First quarter, halftime, Houston and Texas, no score in a game featuring two teams in the top ten. Michigan leading Northwestern by three touchdowns in the third quarter. And Pittsburgh a big winner over West Virginia. LSU starts from the eight-yard line. First and ten, Tigers. What lead is it to Alexander? We've got a marker. As Charles gets out to the 15-yard line. But another marker. Interesting to note, as the call here is again against LSU, the only time Alabama has lost this season was to USC. And, of course, that was the day that Charles White had such a big day. And I guess if anybody in the country compares to Charles White, the great USC tailback, it would be the other Charles, Alexander of LSU. Very true, Al, but uh, by the same token, in the three years that uh, Alexander has played against the Crimson Tide, he has yet to score, even though he's averaged about four and a half uh, yards a crack. Statistics here, as you see, are pretty even, with the exception of uh, the offensive play with Alabama's passing. They've had 40 yards passing to just 10 for the Crimson Tide. And a lead half the distance to the goal line, so it is first down and 14. And one lead to throw from the end zone, looking for Carson. Body bolt in the air, but he make the catch? I think he did. Yes! Sensational at the 47-yard line. Ricky Tucker right there with him, and Carson gets LSU out of a big hole. What a play. Great catch. It was well, it was well covered on the play. Watch Woodley now. He comes back, fakes to Alexander to hold the linebackers in there. Then he goes one on one. He's got Carson who can run a 4 3 40. The ball is bounced around a little bit right there. Carson's secondary reaction here grabs the ball, and what a catch. At the 48 yard line, Guy John, 
across midfield to the time 49. Mike Sebastian made the stop. Here's Carson isolated. Incredible catch. One on one right down the field. And what a change in field position from deep in the shadows of their own goal line. Here comes Carson down. Goes up for the ball. It was played well by Ricky Tucker. But there, what a catch by Carson. And takes him in good field position. Second down and seven. LSU has it just across midfield. Game tied, 7-7, early, second quarter. Charles Alexander slips out to the right side, gets down to the 46-yard line. David Woodley, the quarterback, in the air today, 3-3 three for, three for 84 yards as they send Carson back in. Third down, these are always tough calls. You want to run it, you want to pass it, it's about three yards, three long ones. Third down, a long three at the 46 yard line. Oh, screen, screen. Under pressure, but he gets it away, complete to the 40 yard line. Oh, look at Alexander. This move. Inside the 35 to the 33. So they send Charles out of the backfield, and LSU has another first down. He's stopped by Murray Legg. It looked like they were trying to set up a screen, but then Alexander went on through the screen, and he hit him with a pass. Let's take another look at it. Woodley comes back. Looks like they're setting up for a screen. You see him slide to the left. A lot of pressure on him. But there you are. Watch Alexander run here. Watch his feet. Very quick with him. Avoiding tackles. I thought for a minute he was going to break away and go all the way. First down, Tigers at the 33-yard line. Woodley is now four for four in the air. Rajon, the sole running back, has no help at all. <laughs> well. Marty Lyon says hello at the line of scrimmage. Other scores, Army beating Boston College by three. And Syracuse beats Navy, 20 to 17. Go figure that, huh? Well, I guess uh, Navy was pretty well shook up after the Irish got him last week. Rutgers over Temple by a field goal in Delaware. Each one out over Villanova. Cubby Raymond. Second down and 10. LSU from the 33-yard line. Woodley, who is four for four, will keep this time. And loses the ball, but it goes out of bounds at the 30. Well, he can really turn it on. I didn't realize he was that fast. He can really move. He's been a good runner all year. They'll spot it at the 30-yard line, where it will be third and seven. Gardner beat Brown by 10. Cornell handles Columbia today, 35 to 14, with Harvard a four-point winner over Penn. And in the Ivy League, Yale 23, Princeton 7. Third down, 7 from the 30-yard line. Woodley, protection breaks down, but he goes the other way. Oh. He had Alexander open, but missed him at the 15-yard line. Nobody was there with Charles. Right, he was on the move. Woodley was on the move, and I think maybe that might have caused him to throw the ball poorly. But uh, he had Alexander wide open down the right sideline. There he is. Woodley comes right back to the pocket. Both the uh, fullback and uh, Alexander check through and go to the outside. Look at Woodley get outside the pocket. He could have run that ball for a long way for a first down. Uh-oh, they got too many men on the field. Mike Conway to attempt the field goal from the 37-yard line. The kick is good, but a marker is down. And Arrow is right. They had 12 men on the field, and the 12th man was trying to get off the field and couldn't in time. And so that's going to cost Conway the field goal. And is he ever upset? Can you blame well, him? He's upset. The call was right. I don't know that he's, he may be upset at his own team, but he has no cause to be upset with the officials. John Watson, number 70, was the man who was on the field, tried to get off, but too late. The official able to spot it, and that cost Conway a field goal. Well, now he's got to kick himself a 52-yard field goal. So a procedure call. Penalties have now cost LSU at least nine points today, and maybe a tenth. Correct. So now they have to punt. And standing in midfield, is Conway, who will try to handle the ball. Oh, he shanked the kick. Very short kick. Oh, he shanked the ball. 
Out of bounds, he'll spot it at the 26-yard line. Barry Krause put the pressure on that time, and so Bama will take over at the 26. An eight-yard punt. Well, Conway is supposed to be good on what they call a butt pump. Try to put him into trouble, but he shanked the ball. 10.40 to go. First half. LSU 7. Alabama 7 in Birmingham. Charlie Mack, 16 years on the plus side. Only one losing season. He played under Bear Bryant at Kentucky. Great football coach. So Alabama has the ball at their own 26-yard line. Sheely is a quarterback. He scored the touchdown earlier, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage by Lyman White, number 94. Well, Lyman White is really closing down from the backside. As soon as they start the, the wishbone option to the short side of the field, he just taken off, and he's catching the quarterback before he can make his option. Watch him right here. You see him right there, number 94. Sheely starts down the line on his option. And you'll watch White come into the picture here. Grab him there. Well, you can't quite see it there. Ogilvy. And the major gets spun down at the 45-yard line. And another marker down. It's flag day on Veterans Day in Birmingham. <laughs> it is that. <laughs> Let's see which way it goes. I didn't see the sign I was watching out in the field. Looks like a personal, personal foul. Personal foul? I believe. Boy, the Tigers have been devastated by penalties. I don't know whether he grabbed his mask or not. He flipped him around like he might have, uh, might have, but I couldn't quite see it. Let's see what he gives us here. Yeah, personal foul. Let's see if we can take another look at it. Here's Ogilvy. Breaks out into the secondary here with a good open field opportunity. Let's see. Well, I don't know. I don't see it. So it's first down and Jackson, the fullback, number 33, carries for four to the 36-yard line. Tommy Frizzell in on the stop. LSU has already been penalized six times for 51 yards, but more importantly, penalties have cost them nine points officially and maybe a tenth if they would have made the conversion after the interception run back. Well, that's why every coach in America tries to say, hey, we've got to avoid penalties. But that's the nature of the game. It's a game of errors. You try to make less than your opponent. Alabama will utilize its first timeout of the first half here as the sun begins to set in Birmingham this stadium expanded and now holds 77,000 and we are close to that today as we look around a town that prides itself as the football capital of the south and as you can see Legion Field the construction over the years now an enclosed bowl we can tell you coming up battle of the network stars 78 celebrities from the three networks coming up next Saturday. Eastern Pacific, 7 Central Time. Gabe Kaplan, Rob Williams from ABC, Robert Conner, captain of the NBC team, and Paul Stevenson, captaining the CBS group. Next Saturday, Battle of the Network Stars, 78 over most of these ABC stations. Nine minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the first half. At halftime, Oklahoma, Nebraska. Highlights of that game. A wild one at Lincoln. The LSU band. Look at the LSU campus and an ABC News report. It is second down and six from the 36-yard line. And again, it is Jackson carrying for about two as Billy takes it to the 34. John Adams, 86. Very fine defensive end. A junior made the tackle. He also has had two interceptions during the course of the year. And listen to this. He's running back with 79 yards. So he's an all-purpose player. They're really high on him. And normally they're punter. Yes. Third down. 43 yards of crack. It's third and five. Desmond Sheely. Jackson carries. And Billy's got it inside the 30. They'll spot it at the 29, enough for a first down. Bucknell winning over Colgate today, 7 to nothing. And Connecticut defeating Boston U by a touchdown, with Massachusetts easily handling Holy Cross. Eight by three. On first down, this is Ogilvy with some blocking. 
inside the 20 should have the first down well they went on a quick count that time and i th think they caught lsu before they were really set and they really took advantage of it they got great momentum at the corner they picked up a lot of positive yardage they got a good drive going here First down Alabama, they have moved the ball inside the LSU 18-yard line. Eight minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Alabama 7, LSU 7. From the 18-yard line, and Bama jumping off. Tim Travis going on the wrong count. Georgia, the winner over Florida, of course, to stay unbeaten. The Bulldogs are now 5-0 in the SEC, and in the fourth quarter, it's the Tigers of Auburn, leading Mississippi State 6-0. Kentucky breezed today. And Mississippi beat Tulane by 10. Maryland, the 10-point winner, bouncing back after the loss to Penn State last week. And Clemson handled North Carolina by four. First down, 15. Alabama at the 23. Jackson fights his way inside the 20. Down to the 17. George Atia, number 60, making the stop. Duke winning over Wake Forest, 3-0. That's surprising. The low score is Furman beats West Carolina, 24-7. David Chicago's not the end. Second down, 9. At the 17. Whitman inside the 10. Gets down to the seven. Well, they're really picking on that uh, defensive right side. Willie Teal made the stop. <laughs> they're forcing a lot of secondary tackles, and Whitman is really running hard. He's a big guy, 6'3", 224, and he really looks like it when he comes out the other end. They'll measure here. They've got a first down. Bear Bryant, we mentioned so many running backs. He can go to Jackson, he can go to Whitman, he can go to Ogilvy, he can go to Nathan. And he uses them, too, during the course of the afternoon. The only difference is one back does not get the ball as often as an eye back does. Maybe nine or ten times for Nathan. We'll see Alexander probably with 30. Ball at the seven. Sealy keeping. Gets it to the one. Boy, that's a great piece of running there. He ran through a lot of traffic. And again, Ari, they're working that right side of the LSU defense. Yeah, they really are. They keep, uh, the whole drive, practically, has been on the left hash mark. And LSU has been defensing the field. Strong safety, Marcus Quinn has been coming to the field. He, he, he's even blitzed a couple of times, but they're going away from him. Now to try to take the lead on second down and goal. It's Major Ogilvy for the touchdown. Goes across for the touchdown, his seventh of the season, and Alabama has taken the lead with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. So a methodical drive on the ground. McElroy to attempt the extra point. Kevin Jones to do the holding. Dick is perfect. Seven minutes remaining in the first half as the Tide fights from behind. They now lead the Tigers 14 to 7. Alabama's scoring drive. Ten plays, all on the ground, most over the left side. 74 yards in 340. There's the man who scored it. Major Ogilvy went in from the one as McElroy kicks off. It is 14 to 7, Alabama. Hokey Dijon is deep, takes it five yards in, and he'll down it there. So LSU snake bitten so far by penalties. That has really cost them. It really has, and uh, they have to be shaken a little bit by the drive that Stedman Shealy stepping in there for Rutledge put on, driving the tie down. There's 74 yards, and with, with very, I think they had one five-yard penalty in there that they overcame. But everything down that left side behind the great blocking of Brock Adelette and uh, to the split inside. 
And interestingly enough, the LSU defense, number one in the conference against the rush, but looking anything but on that last drive. Well, they've only given up during the year 119 yards a game. Of course, Alabama's number one in rushing offense. Correct. Notre Dame was a winner over Tennessee, 31 to 14. LSU from its 20-yard line. They trail by seven. Woodley coming back this way. Turns it up and gets out to the 25-yard line. Ryan Lyons and Randy Scott making the tackle. Actually, the uh, Alabama defense was so fast getting over there, they had one of the people there, that they overran Woodley and he turned back to the side and picked up about five yards. Otherwise, it would have been stopped for no game. It was a top option. Second down and five. Well, we've got a flag and some shoving involving Lou Delani of LSU. And he was the man who moved. They also, uh, the Tigers had both Carlos Carson and Lionel Wallace in the game. Looked like they were setting up three receivers in there. Now they go back, second down and almost ten. Seventh penalty against LSU in the first half. Now they take Wallace out. They've got Orlando McDaniel in wide to the right. They've got Carson wide to the left on second down and ten as they put Quintella in the slot. And again, we've got movement. As Curtis McGriff came across from Alabama, number 96. Curtis McGriff jumped offside that time. I don't know what's going on down there, whether or not the noise is a problem, but they seem to be having trouble with the snap count. It could also be there's some defensive signals being called, and they misinterpret that as the uh, snap count. At that time, Curtis McGriff tried to anticipate the snap uh, count and jumped offside, bumped the center. He fumbled the ball. Things aren't going as smoothly as either team would like. No, that's the fifth penalty against Alabama. With 6.22 to go in the half. Alabama leading 14-7. It is second down and five. LSU from just outside. It's 25. They send Alexander in motion. Guy John out to the 30-yard line. Barry Krause made the stop. He's a good runner. He's the type of runner, Ara, who could conceivably, were it not for Alexander, be the tailback in an eye formation. As a matter of fact, that's where he started, and then they switched him up to the fullback spot so they could keep him both in there. Here's Barry Krause again, warding off a block and stepping in and making the tackle on Guy Jean. Boy, he's a football player. In the same way as you were saying, uh, Al, it's very true. Guy Jean started as a tailback and was backing up Alexander, and there was no sense in taking two players like that and only playing one of the two. And Guy Jean is 217. Can you imagine they put him in on kickoff returns or punt returns so you know how fast it is? Second down, as you can see after the measurement, it will be third down now. And a millimeter or two. At the 30-yard line. Legion Field, packed to the gills today. In the late afternoon, Bama leading 14 to seven. Third down and an inch. Guy John, 35, 40, out to the 43-yard line. Good call. They lined up in a power eye to the right, and Woodley faked the ball like he was going to go to the right, and then turned around and handed off to Guy Jean over the left side. And I mean, a big hole opened because Alabama was over-defensing what they thought where the play was going to go. First and 10, LSU at the 43-yard line. Guy Jean has carried seven times for 36 yards. They slot Quintella on first and 10 from the 43. Guy John again, getting a lot of work today out to the 46-yard line. Mike Sebastian. Well, they probably figure that uh, Alabama will be keying on Alexander, and he hasn't had the ball much. They're trying to slide Guy John in there because he's a strong runner, a guy that can go all the way for you. Guy John averaging four and a half yards a carry. 
Actually, a better yards per carry average than Alexander coming into the game. Yeah. Charlie averaging 4.3. They still got to get that ball in Alexander's hands, though. Yep. There and they is. do here there on the is. draw. To the 50 and into Bama territory at the 49-yard line out in front of the LSU bench. A little delayed draw in there. And they're blocking it well over the left side. It'll be third down and two. At the Alabama 49-yard line, four and a half minutes to play, first half. Alabama leading 14-7. Charles Alexander had carried the ball nine times for 33 yards. Third down, two. Alexander looking for the first down. Can't find any room at all. Boy, that was good defense. Excellent. Four red shirts right there, including Marty Lyons, 93, and Murray Legg, 19. So no room for Charles, and it will be fourth down and two. Uh, he's really a nice kid, too. I've, I've never seen anyone, talk, uh, the whole staff, everybody that knows this Alexander can't say enough good things about him. He's really a terrific kid. They speak glowingly of him, as you can see Nathan standing back at the 10-yard line, single safety. John Adams to punt. Breeze has died down right now. The flag's just about flipped. Adams Adams. Fair catch called for and made at the 13-yard line by Tony Nathan. We didn't think we'd see Nathan back there because of that eye problem, but he's back there receiving punts. 325 to go in the half. There's the score. Bama by seven. Al Michaels and Ara Barsigian in Birmingham. You can see that tube running back of the LSU bench. The tube has slats, and that is the air conditioning unit provided for LSU here on a relatively warm day as Alabama starts from its own 13-yard line, and Ogilvy takes it out to the 17. Gain of four. Jerry Hill made the stop. It was relatively warm at the start of the game, 3 o'clock local time, about 75 degrees and a bit humid. It's cooled off a little bit since. We got Rumlich back in there now. After Sheely had led them on two series, it is Rutledge pitching it back to Nathan, and he is dumped. Back of the line of scrimmage, Marcus Quinn, number 40, came in, the sophomore from New Orleans. Six feet even, 204 pounder. A lot of great games still to come on ABC this fall, including this one Friday, December 1st, Texas A&M against Texas. You'll see it at 9 o'clock Eastern time. For those of you in the Austin area planning to attend, the kickoff now at 8.10 p.m. Friday, December 1st, Texas A&M and Texas. Third down and six. Rutledge dumping it off for Ogilvy, and he's dropped back at the 13-yard line. There's Marcus Quinn again, who's made two fine plays back-to-back, -back, number 40. A strong safety he seems to be now on the right spot. On the other drive, he was always away from it, but this time he seems to be right where they're running. Alabama to kick. Clock is running. Less than two minutes now, remaining in the first half. Alabama leading 14-7. Freeze kick bounces at the 40 and takes a good out-of-bama bounce and he picks yeah. up about 10 yards on the roll to midfield. A favorable bounce there because uh, that additional 10 yards makes a difference. Instead of being at the 40-yard line of Alabama, it's right at midfield. Birmingham, Alabama, live on a Saturday afternoon as Alabama leads 14 to 7, 142 remaining in the first half. Let's see what kind of attack they go with now. With a minute and 42 right at midfield, let's see if they put it up or try those gadgets that they have been uh, known for. They can come up with some big plays as they did last week against Mississippi. Alexander is the tailback. They send Charles in motion. And after a long count, it is Guy John. And Guy John blows his way inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Clock temporarily stopped on the first down. First and ten at the 39-yard line. All right, the Alabama 39. Taking out a tight end and putting in a, a split end. Let's see if they go to the air with this. 
clock's running. And a timeout called by LSU. So Woodley will come over and discuss it with McClendon. Apparently they weren't sure. He didn't get exactly the, the call. It was transferred from the bench onto the field. A good call by Woodley. Call timeout. Don't make a mistake. Don't have a delay of the game penalty and waste it down. So it was a well worth taking that timeout. Woodley, four out of five. 97 yards, including a touchdown pass to Carlos Carson. Again, if you join us late, LSU took a 7-0 lead, then Chris Williams apparently ran one back after an interception for a touchdown, but it was nullified by a clip. Alabama eventually got the ball back, moved into the tying touchdown, and then picked up seven more. Caught up at halftime. Oklahoma, Nebraska highlights. What a game in Lincoln today. Won by the Huskers. 17 to 14. The LSU band, a look at the LSU campus, and an ABC News halftime report followed by the Crimson Tide band. Coming up at the half. We have 1.30 to go, second quarter, first and 10. LSU from the Alabama 39. The pressure put on, and he throws it away. The crowd wants grounding, but there are no flags. John Morrow put the pressure on, number 84. Where do you think John Morrow's from? He's from South Bend. Here comes Woodley rolling off to the right. Morrow's a defensive right end. Looks like he wants to throw it. He gets pressure here from Morrow. And Morrow doesn't have enough of him to keep him from throwing the football. And he did save all that negative yardage. Second down and 10. Tigers at the Alabama 39-yard line. Orlando McDaniel is split wide to the right. Quintella, slot left. Take to Gajan. And the keeper by Woodley. Inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. The option's always a good play to run when the defensive team is deployed to stop a pass or they've got the clock running for them. It's a good call, and Woodley made a lot of yardage on it. First down. First down just inside the 28-yard line. LSU has two timeouts remaining in the first half. And the clock running, 113, 112, 111 to go in the second quarter. First and 10 from just inside the 28-yard line. Woodley, going to the far side, incomplete at the 20-yard line. Lionel Wallace, the intended receiver, Don McNeil, blanketing him. Yeah, Don McNeil on that left corner. Thought he had a crack at the interception, and he hit himself in the helmet after he went to the ground there after knocking the play down and knocking the ball down. We thought he might have been able to pick that off. He'd have had a lot of daylight ahead of him if he'd been able to do so. There's Conway, the LSU field goal specialist. Warming up, getting ready for what he hopes will be an extra point attempt. Second down. Ten. Woodley rolling. Has time. Nobody is open, though. And he's bumped down at the 23-yard line. Coverage was good, but Woodley seems to find some daylight to run through on passing attempts. They haven't been able to really get it, sack him. And uh, in spite of the fact that all the receivers were covered, he still was able to pick up the artist. Look at Scott there, too. Yeah, looks like he's limping a little bit. Timeout is called by LSU. As Woodley comes very slowly over toward the near sideline to discuss it with McClendon on the timeout here. Let's see whether they switch quarterbacks or not. The other quarterback is Steve Enslinger, who was actually in for the first offensive play of the day, though Woodley was also in the game as a split back on that particular play. And then Woodley took over a quarterback on the second play, and he's played the whole half. Well, that was part of the uh, things that happened a, a week ago in the Mississippi game where they had used them effectively both in the game. You see Conway as he's getting all ready for it. Notice Conway. how he really ties up his shoe to block up any leakage in it in the sense of uh, his foot moving around in that shoe. Look at that. It gives you a lot of leverage. Even though it looks kind of awkward, it does put a lot of oomph into the ball. He booted what would have been a long field goal before, but it was nullified by a penalty. It is third down and five. 
from the 23. 53 seconds to go in the half. Woodley looking for Quintella at the 13-yard line. That's a first down, and he's out of bounds. And also only took six seconds. Ricky Tucker making the stop. So 47 seconds remaining in the first half. LSU has one timeout left. They'll spot it at the 14-yard line. Alabama leading 14 to 7. Let's see what they come up with here. They got a lot of field to go to to the right. And Woodley has been successful when he rolls out and either runs or passes with it. McDaniel is wide right. Carson is wide to the left. They send Alexander in motion on first down and give the ball to Guy Jean, and he's wrapped up. Ricky Gilliland in on the stop. Well, I went to man-to-man -man defense that time and had a lot, of a lot of linemen and linebackers sticking right in there keying on the remaining back. LSU will not use its timeout. The clock is running. 28, 27 seconds left in the half. It is second down and 12 from the 16. Uh -oh. They give it to Alexander on the draw up, and he gets to the 12-yard line. 17, 16, clock ticking down, and LSU will now spend its last timeout. That was Ricky Gilliland, too, that saved the touchdown, I think. Linebacker, otherwise, he was gone. I thought from up here that he was going to avoid that tackle. 14 seconds. It'll be third down and nine. Of course, LSU thinking possible field goal here, but they may have time to run another play. Well, they got time to run another play, I'm sure. Providing, of course, they don't run a running play and they throw a sideline pattern that Aguilar gets out of bounds in the end zone. Exactly. You see, he's getting the instruction right now. Hey, now, don't get caught on the field of play. We've only got 14 seconds. A reminder coming up, NCAA doubleheader. Next Saturday, regional games, 12.30 Eastern time. Most of you will see USC UCLA following that at 4 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday. 14-7, Alabama. Third down, eight. Listen to the noise now in Legion Field. Yeah. It'll be tough for Woodley to bark the signal. Third and eight. I guess a sideline pattern here to make sure that they and make sure to dump the ball if you're not going to have anybody. Woodley looking for Quintella incomplete. Mike Quintella, the intended receiver, covered by Murray Leg. That ate up five seconds. So they have nine seconds left, and Conway will come in to try to pair the deficit to four. Woodley is now five out of nine for 106 yards. So Conway will set it up on the near hash mark. Kicking in an angle from the 20-yard line, a 30-yard effort. Woodley holding. And Conway's kick is good. With four seconds left in the half, Conway puts three up on the board for the Tigers as Alabama's lead has been trimmed to 14 to 10. Well, they used the clock very well on that drive. They mixed up their passes and their runs. They drove down, and of course, even at that last pass could have been a touchdown. Ball was thrown to thrown slightly. But with a few seconds left to go on the clock, they did get three points. It didn't come up empty that time, and it's a 14-10 game. I was very much impressed with the way the poise that they demonstrated on that uh, drive. Tony Nathan. Dropping back for what figures to be a bouncing ball kick here. They're not going to put it in Nathan's hand. Not with four seconds remaining. Let one of the up men handle it. And that should take care of the clock. Now they just want to run that time off the clock. Conway kicking off. They'll keep it on the ground. Kind of let it roll around. Dribbling. Going out of bounds. Yep. Well, start over again. Yep. He'll have to bring it back. To the 35 now. He just hit it a little too hard. All he wanted to do is get that ball in there and let it wobble around a little bit. And as soon as the ball is touched, it, it activates the clock. But uh, he let it run out of bounds, and they'll have to kick from the 35 now. 
So still four seconds remaining in the first half as Connolly will kick off again from the 35-yard line. Alabama that time at 10 men near midfield, and only Nathan was back. And they deploy the same way again. Nathan this time stands back at the 20-yard line. Now, so this one is fielded by Nathan at the 26-yard line. And Tony with his knee down there as time runs out. Half about to begin. Lou Eichner is back with Tony Nathan to receive the kick from Mike Conway as LSU kicks off to start the second half. Alabama leading 14 to 10. It is Nathan from the goal line. Tony to the 10, the 15, the 20, and wrestled down at the 23-yard line. Nathan returns 24 yards. So the first and 10 for Alabama. At the 24-yard line, penalties played. LSU in the first half took at least nine points off the board. They trail by four. First and 10. Stedman Sheely did a great job at quarterback on two series, but they start with Rutledge here in the second half. Out of the eye this time, the pitch to Ogilvy. Major Ogilvy outside the 25, out to the 28-yard line. Tony Nathan trying to block for him. Tommy Frizzell made the tackle. Woodley warming up. Dave Woodley had a good first half. Keeping the arm warm along the sideline. This is an emergency. Ogilvy's having quite an afternoon. Or evening, I guess, by now. Lights having full effect in Birmingham. Second down and five from the 28-yard line. Nothing in the middle. Steve Whitman, as we look at the LSU defense, Lyman White and Gary Radiker on the left side. The right tackle, number 97, Kent Broha, out of New Orleans, and a good one, John Adams, the junior right end, also the punter. George Cupid, one linebacker, George Atia plays the nose guard position, and Dad Minoldi works the outside linebacker spot. Third down and six. Alabama from the 27-yard line. Makes the Whitman. Then Rutledge has a man open at the 38-yard line for a first down. Number eight, Rick Neal. Normally lines up as the tight end, though sometimes they flex and picks up the first. They did a great job there. Rick Neal was lined up at tight end. And, uh, of course, here's your secondary for LSU. Well, the Tigers. Brent Elkins, yeah. the strong safety. And, of course, Chris Williams, who ran back the kick for what would have been a touchdown, or ran back the interception for what would have been six, had it nullified by the penalty. Tony Nathan to the 44-yard line. Tommy Frizzell making the tackle for the Tigers. Take a look at the numbers now. First half. Well, they're pretty even as far as the uh, first downs are concerned. They're 10-10, but the difference is in the yardage where LSU has a little edge, uh, mainly through their passing, where they have outpassed Alabama 106 to 26. Back to action. Nathan fighting his way into LSU territory. And a first down again is Frizzell with James Britt coming up from the corner to make the stop. But Tony picks up a first at the 47-yard line. Alabama on the move again. I think one of the things that's happening here is the uh, LSU is really defending the wide side of the field, and Alabama seems to keep running to the short side where they get a little bit extra leverage there. There it goes again. With the full moon over Birmingham. It's Nathan. <laughs> Moving to the 43-yard line, George Atia, number 60, the nose guard. And Willie Teal coming up from the secondary. Pickup of about five. It'll be second down, five to go at the 42-yard line. Rutledge, the quarterback, Nathan, and Whitman, along with Ogilvy. In the backfield, Hugh, the split end number four. Rick Neal caught a pass earlier. Yeah, the Alabama men up front. Nathan has now carried 10 times for 42 yards and his second down is five. Uh-oh, broken play. Broken play and Rutledge gets to the 41-yard line. 
Looks like uh, Rutledge went the wrong way because the backs all went, the three backs went the proper way except Rutledge. John Adams wrapped Rutledge up, number 86. Ball at the 41-yard line. Alabama third down and four. Early in the third quarter, Alabama leading LSU 14 to 10. Bruce Bolton comes out wide to the left. Just look over the shoulder of Bear Bryant on third and four. The fake to Whitman, and Rutledge keeps and gets the first down. Jeff Rutledge, including a great career at Alabama. His brother, of course, Gary, was a quarterback here. Yeah, all the Rutledges have had great careers here, along with the Hannas. The Hannas and the Rutledges. Gazelle is playing a good ball game. They're coming back to that side again, to that short side. He's made a lot of plays, but Alabama's picking up a lot of positive yardage. First down from the 34-yard line, Ogilvy. He makes his own hole to the 21-yard line. You know, Tony okay. Nathan gets most of the publicity, yeah. but this guy's pretty good, too. Oh, he's playing a great ball game, and you'd think that he was bigger than 6 foot 180. He runs like a 210-pounder. Watch him here. Second back through. Take the Whitman. Give to Ogilvy. Look at the hole he gets, but look at him drive. Now, watch his legs. Taking a tackle. Now, he carries. Is that number uh, 47 or 37? What a deal. Oh. Loose ball, but Rutledge covers it. Back at the 26-yard line. Lyman White forcing it loose, but Rutledge is able to maintain possession. He's going to lose five on the play, and it will be second down and 15. It's a little tougher for him now. It's down inside the 30-yard line. They're down at the 26, but it's third down, or second down, and 14 now to the second and 10 or less. Shade more than 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Out of the wish ball. Older deep on very little room. Gets to the 23-yard line, stopped by George Cupid. This program being brought to you is a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. You're watching TV 6 and Third quarter in Birmingham. Al Michaels, Ara Parsegian with you. Alabama leads 14 to 10. They have a third down and 11 at the 23-yard line. On the move, and Rutland is back to throw, and looks for Neal incomplete. Overthrows him in the end zone. Rick Neal, senior tight end out of Birmingham. Well, they had him open, Al, if he had brought it in front of him more, let him a little bit more. He overthrew it and slightly behind him, but he did have leverage on him. He had him open. So Rutland comes off. The field goal unit comes on. Alan McElroy. They'll spot it down at the 30-yard line. Kevin Jones to hold. 40-yard kick. It is long enough. It is good. Right. Okay. Got the three points back that they lost at the end of the half. Alabama's first possession of the second half culminates in a field goal. And so. With 9.37 to go in the third, it's Bama by seven. Alabama has been number one so far today, at least in this one. They lead 17 to 10. And for John, after the McElroy field goal, and now McElroy to kick off with Hokey Guy John. Back deep for LSU. Good kick. Guy John drops it and then puts his knee down in the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. I think he made a wide decision. I don't think he was going to bring it back, Al. He was about a yard or two in the end zone. And uh, the 20 yards, he's better to get nailed at the 10. LSU's first offensive possession in the second half. From the 20-yard line, David Woodley is the quarterback. Alexander and Guy John went all the way at the running back spot in the first half. They put Quintella in the slot to the right. Charles Alexander gets five yards. 
racked up at the 25-yard line. Wayne Hamilton, as we look at the Alabama defense, here's the left end. Marty Lyons, a good one out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Curtis McGriff plugs up the middle number. 96 from Cottonwood. Mike Sebastian had a good first half. Senior right tackle and E.J. Jr. the third out of Nashville, Tennessee. The right end, Ricky Gilliland at one linebacker spot. And Barry Krause, whose number has been in your screen all day long. The other linebacker, number 77. Second down and five. LSU from the 25-yard line. Quintella is in motion. The fake to Alexander. Woodley throwing left side out to the 39-yard line for Carlos Carson, who caught a touchdown pass to give LSU the lead early in the first quarter. Out at the 39-yard line, first down. Alan Crumbly was there with him. Well, he, Crumbly was afraid of the deep pass, and he was pretty soft on him, about eight, nine yards deep. And uh, Carson just hooked up back there on the sideline. There was no underneath coverage. You'll see him come right down the field here, Carlos, Carlos Carson. He sees he can't beat him deep, so he stops, goes to the sideline. The ball is low. He makes a great catch, but Crumbly is deep in coverage. Take what they give you. First down, 40-yard line, LSU. Dijon. Gain of about two. The defensive backfield, Don McNeil, the junior left halfback. There's Crumbly, number 17, out of Birmingham. The strong safety, he's a good one. Murray Leg, number 19. And the weaker free safety is Ricky Turner out of Florence, Alabama. Gain of two by Guy Jean on the last play. It is second down and eight. LSU from its own 42-yard line. Crimson Tide leading 17-10, halfway through the third quarter. The fake to Guy John, and then the keep by Woodley. Out to the 47. It'll be third down and three. Kurt McGriff, 96. Man to put him down. Showing a lot of patience on this drive. Uh, Woodley just came down on the pure option, forced to keep the ball, turned it inside for some yardage. And one of the things that impresses me, Al, and looking, here we are in Birmingham at Legion Field, and as you look at the two lineups of Alabama, both offensively and defensively, it's just studded with Birmingham players. So Birmingham's got to be pleased with the kind of football players that turned out here. Every guy needed about 50 passes today. Third down and three. Woodley pitching it back to Quintella. And he is out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. They just need short. to get. I think he just spotted it short of the first down. I think yep. another one of those. LSU has had about three or four they of them are today. Inches here. They're inches yeah, away from the first down. Play made two yards. Let's see if he goes or not. I think this is about the third or fourth one. No, they're going to kick it. They're going to kick. It's fourth down and inches at the 49-yard line. And McClendon will opt in board formation. Pinning Alabama deep. John Adams is the punter. Slight breeze at his back. Tony Nathan, single safety, back at the 13-yard line. Look out. Oh, forced a bad punt. And Adams with a short kick out of bounds somewhere around the 31-yard line. I couldn't tell there whether or not he got a piece of it or not. Jay Jr., the man to put the pressure on. So first down, tied at their own 31, 658 to go in the third. Tied by a touchdown. Alabama starts this drive at its own 31-yard line. First and 10, 658 to go in the third quarter. And Rutledge gets eaten up back at the 28 by Lyman White, number 94. Well, they were deployed well to stop that option. He just Rutledge comes down the line in the pure option, does not give to the first man, Whitman, and nobody picks up White, and he comes right through and takes Rutledge before he can execute the other dimension of the option. Second down, 13. Alabama at its own 28-yard line. Ogilvy just about back to the original line of scrimmage. Third down and 10. Atia, number 60, making the tackle. Sticks it. Sticks it. Okay, let's take a look at McGriff, is it? I mean, uh, Atia. He just comes right around the block, and here's Ogilvy making the second effort again. 
Third down and 10. From the 31, Nathan is looking downfield, and the pass at the 46 yard line is caught by Rick Neal, number eight. Well, that ball seemed to hang in the air forever. Didn't it? <laughs> just, he was wide open, and he finally threw it. The ball just hung out there. Someone's limping down there. Who is that? I can't see it. Here's another look at it. Rutledge fakes the Whitman, deals the ball off to Nathan, and watch the ball hang in the air. He throws it up there over top of the uh, Quinn, I guess it is, and makes the catch. Man who was limping is doing more than that. Dwight Stevenson was down and now goes limping off the field. Oh, that's Dwight Stevenson. Yep, the Alabama oh, center. He is a great center, too. They're just He has faced all the great ones, Al, over the, his career. He's a senior now. He's gone against all of them, and he's handled all of them. I think he's one of the great centers in the country. He's replaced by Tom Huffstedler. Do you wonder about the exchange Well, here? you always do. You always do. Tony Nathan to the short side of the field. Very little room. Picks up maybe three. Kent Broha made the stop for the Tigers. Second down and seven upcoming. You know, Alabama's a well-drilled team. Bear Bryant's been around a long time. And he, you know, every day they come out there, they try the exchange centers with both centers. Stevenson and Hustetler going with both Rutledge and Sheely and then mixing it up so that they don't make mistakes. Once again at Jacksonville today, it was Georgia over Florida by two to stay on top in the SEC. Nathan gets it to the 49-yard line. Other scores, fourth quarter, Auburn hanging on over Mississippi State. Kentucky routing Vanderbilt today. Mississippi a winner over Tulane. And Maryland by 10 over Virginia. Clemson picking up a victory over the Tar Heels. And Duke, 3-0 over Wake Forest. Third down and four. Rutledge pitching late. And out of bounds at the 45-yard line to Eichner. Gain of three yards on the play. That was a risky one there. Yeah. Risky pitch that time for the reward. Georgia Tech had no problem with the altitude out west. There's an there's oh, upset. Look at that. Kansas State over Colorado. Missouri routing Kansas. Fourth down and inches for Alabama. They're going to go for it at the 45-yard line. Right, now down. they switch as Humphrey goes back into punt formation at his own 40. He threw a pass earlier in a punting situation. He gets this kick away. Tries to angle it. Oh. Dropped at the seven yard line and loose and look out. Alabama's got the ball at the two. Chris Williams juggled it, dropped it, and then Bama converged on it. it looked like his head his hands up in the wrong position. Instead of looking like he was going to cradle the ball, it looked like he was trying to catch it like an outfielder. It's Eichner, number 30, who recovers it at the two-yard line. Oh. Oh, Charlie Mack, I know how he feels. I've been in that. Let's see if we can take another look here and see what happens. Of course, it gets away from him. He can't get to it. He gets an arm there on it, bounces off the helmet of someone, and all the way to the two-yard line. Back to action. Ogilvy tries to jump through the middle. Well, they stack that up. There's a lot of bodies in there. Both teams are really tough inside the 10-yard line. I know Charlie Matt told me that about Bear Bryant. He says, this team could get inside the 10. You've got to really struggle to get it in. And the same way for LSU. You've got to fight to get that ball in there. Second down and goal from the one. Nathan. Look at Left that. Up. Look at that defense. Tony Nathan ran into a wall. Marcus Quinn was there, number 40. Ground level, watch this. I'll tell you, this puts a straight hand off, trying to get Nathan diving over, but he is met by just about everybody. It looks like, is that 40? Is that Marcus Quinn? Marcus it looks like Quinn. No. He's right up in there making the play. Third down and goal. Inside the one. Rutledge is going to pass. And touchdown. Rick Neal, number eight. Great execution from the tight spot. How about Bear Bryant? He'll throw you, won't he? Oh, I'll tell you, 
Third down and gold inside the one, put it up in the air. And he got the execution that he wanted on the play. It was not an easy throw or catch. Rick Neal's got great hands. He loosened up and grabbed that ball. Looked like for a minute it might be overthrown from this vantage point here. But he really sucked that ball up. Alan McElroy, the extra point attempt. Kick is good. Alabama cashing in on the fumble by Chris Williams. It's the tie, 24, and the Tigers, 10. Well, Neal has picked up his own bank club. Caught the touchdown pass. Alabama leads 24 to 10. Rick Neal, number eight. McElroy to kick off. Guy John deep for LSU. Hokey Guy John will take it three yards in. Down it there. They'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Once again, the touchdown on third and goal from inside the one. Lovelich fakes to Whitman, comes down the line as you see Neal break into the end zone from the tight uh, end position. And this ball from this vantage point, look at him reach up and grab that ball. It was a great catch. Almost overthrown. There's Neal. We've got a flag down on the run back. Breaks have killed LSU and penalties. The penalties playing a major part in the first half, costing LSU a touchdown and a field goal. Now we've got a mass face mask call against Alabama. Yep. Take them out to 35. Robert IA, the referee. Marching it off. And so LSU trailing by two touchdowns. Begins this operation from its own 35-yard line. Pittsburgh and the Rams, special Sunday edition of NFL football. Great matchup tomorrow night. Followed by the Bengals and the Raiders on Monday night football at 9 Eastern time. So the NFL back-to-back -back tomorrow and Monday here from the 35-yard line. It is Anslinger hitting Carson at midfield, and he takes it down to the 41-yard line. John McNeil made the stop, so they go with Anslinger. They still have Woodley in the game as we watch the receiver, Carson, isolated. Right, he just comes up the field, and Anslinger just takes the fullback, turn and delivers the ball right to Carson, and you get the feeling up here that uh, LSU is explosive and can go any time. Well, they're going to bring out the tricks right now. They've got Anslinger in the quarterback. They have Woodley in it would be at what would be a split back spot. He is in essence right now slotted to the right. On first down, Guy John. Inside the 40 to the 39, Ricky Gilliland makes the tackle after a gain of three. Second down and seven, LSU at the Alabama 39. It creates a lot of distraction for the uh, secondary. And Alabama defense, when you've got two quarterbacks in there, you know both of them can throw. We don't know whether he's going to fake to one quarterback or give it, and then you have all types of pass options available to you. Exactly. Steve Edschminger, Jr., last week came into the game, completed his first nine attempts against Mississippi. Check this out. McClendon goes to the back of the playbook on second down and seven. Edschminger looking for anybody incomplete. Or did they call it a fumble? No, they call it an incompletion. Boy, it looked, I tell you what, it looks awful close to a Ooh. lateral ball. It looked like he threw the ball right straight across from himself. Either parallel to the line of scrimmage or backwards, it's a lateral. They're ruling it as, let's see if we can pick it up here on the replay. He's forced out of the pocket, turns back to the right, tries to escape. Now he just deals the ball off while he... Well, actually, he did get rid of that ball. I think his arm was going forward in the pass attempt, which is a, a correct call. Third down and seven. Henspringer comes out. Woodley, again, at the quarterback position on third down and seven with split back behind him. Rushes on, dumps it off, and incomplete. And was he ever lucky? Jim Bob Harris put the pressure on as they blitz Woodley, and they're very fortunate they still have the ball. They had man-to-man -man coverage on that time, and everybody was chasing the receivers all over the field, but they put pressure on him. And no one was open. It was almost intercepted. Mike Conway 
to putt and try to angle it. Conway kicks. The kick will bounce oh, at the kick. 12 kick. and out of bounds at the 2. So Conway atones for what happened earlier when he oh, lost it only an 8-yard kick from near midfield. This time he pins Bama deep. But LSU will have to hold and try to take over with good field position because they trail 24 to 10 with a minute 48 to go in the third quarter. Coming up, Battle of the Network stars 78 next January, 8 Eastern Pacific, 7 Central. Celebrity from the three networks, Gabe Kaplan, Robert Conrad, McLean Stevenson in what should be a zany night. Robin Williams and Mark and Mindy will be there next Saturday on ABC from the two-yard line. Alabama going with Stedman Keeley at quarterback right now. And pulling his way is Billy Jackson out to the seven-yard line to give the time some breathing room. Also, you see LSU going into goal line type defenses to try to force the ball back. Nice force the uh, tide to give them the ball back. It's going to be a tough situation. LSU needs the football. Second down and five. Clock running. 1.23 to go. Third quarter. Alabama leading 24 to 10. We've got movement by the left tackle. Flags all over the place. Another motion penalty. Yep. Another motion penalty on uh, the tide. It's a tough place to work with the ball. You're back Jackson up in the shadow of your own goal line. And of course, any kind of an error, you've got a, the same situation that occurred to LSU down there when the fumble by Williams occurred and resulted in a touchdown. Lou Holtz picks up a win over Baylor, 27-14 Arkansas today. SMU, the Ponies. Oof. Wow. Bob Pivich, our producer, is pretty happy about that. 27-17, Tech over TCU. And Tulsa in the third quarter leading Wichita State as you watch the motion penalty assessed against Alabama. Drake, the winner by three over West Texas. And in the third quarter, it's Stanford. 18-7 over Arizona State. Stanford might be the best five and four team in history. Oh, yeah, they've lost <laughs> most ball games. Cal leads Washington State in the third, 15-0. Second down, nine from the three-yard line. Carrying the ball out to close to the nine is Joe Jones, the sophomore from Thomaston, Georgia. His first carry. The Bear right now is really going into, in essence, his second and third string backfield deep in his own territory. He's got confidence, doesn't he? I'll tell you, that shows more courage. This shows the kind of discipline that he gets in the, out of his football team. Here he is backed up in the shadow of his own goal line, and he's got his uh, second unit in there. Third down and four from the eight. Feely pitching it back. Jones, he carries out to the 12. Appears to be shy. Just short of the first down here. But they still executed well, and the important thing is you don't have a turnover down here. We fear that uh, we'll get a cheap, cheap four. Here's another look at it. They've been successful with this just student body left from the wishbone formation. Everybody comes. Here you see Jackson coming, and of course, uh, the, 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 that particular play has been used during the afternoon with Ogilvy carrying the ball and making a lot of yardage that time with Joe Jones. Woody Humphrey to putt, nine seconds, and the clock running in the third quarter. Like Three, two, they're going to wait. And they don't get the delay. The clock runs out. That'll help as a slight breeze, which will now be blowing at Humphrey's back. So we have three quarters in the books in Birmingham. Alabama 24, LSU 10. At Legion Field in Birmingham. Alabama to kick. Woody Humphrey stands in his own end zone. Marcus Quinn back at the 50 yard line for LSU. Good kick. That backs Quinn up. Marcus takes it at the 34 yard line. Trying to come to the left side. Nothing to it. Boy, what a kick. They needed that kind of distance on it to get that field position in their favor, and he did it. Buddy Adelaide, the man who hit him. So LSU from its own 36-yard line. Alabama 24, LSU 10. Fourth quarter. LSU scored early, took a 7-0 lead. Alabama went on top 14-7 at the half. Made it 14-10 just prior to halftime. And now Alabama ahead by two touchdowns. Woodley, straight drop. Over the middle to Carson. At the 45 of the tie. Boy, he can really drill that ball. Looks like he got hit back there, too. 
getting up rather slowly. As Carson, watch how quick he comes off that ball. Sprints up the field and goes right into the seam to the inside. The linebacker, there was no sheltering coverage underneath. The secondary had to pick it up. He actually fell down here. But there was no one to, between the passer and himself. Carlos Carson caught five today. And he's averaging 25 yards of reception. First down from the 46-yard line. The blitz on. Looks oh. for Quintella. Can't handle it at the 33-yard line. He was shadowed by Murray Leg. That's the effect the air conditioner is having on the back of Chris Williams, number 22. Cooled off a bit. Temperature in the mid-70s earlier. Right now, we're down into the high 60s. It looks like there's a lot of air coming out of those things. I don't think that, uh, of course, a night like this, I don't think they're as important as they are when they play down here in the south in the mid-afternoon because it can really get hot, and I can see where they could be very, very practical. Winter may have come to Lincoln, Nebraska today, but certainly not to Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> From the 46, it's Alexander spinning oh, and getting to the 40-yard line. Boy, he was determined on that run. Marty Lyons made the tackle. Third down, four. No reason that, uh, you know, LSU has really moved to football. Uh, here's a score. USC uh -huh. now has jumped out on top 21 to 3. But uh, LSU has, has really moved to football, but they have hey. not been able to. Uh, oh, UCLA 10 to 10 a lot of time. Wow. Well, against Oregon State. Yeah. Third down and four. Woodley. He's going to keep and wrapped up at the 39 yard line. He took a shot from Ricky Gilliland. If Gilliland doesn't get him, Woodley probably gets the first down on that play. Yes, it looked like he had a lot of daylight. Gilliland came in there and made a good play. We'll take another look at it from the end zone. See, Gilliland's number 92, one-on-one -on, -one on Woodley, and he really wraps him up right here. Oh, he really hit him. So they sent Conway in. He angled one out of bounds on the two-yard line late in the third quarter, and he'll try to duplicate that beat here. Conway's kick this time. Bounces at the 10, comes back out to the 12. So Alabama deep in its own territory, but tied in a position right now to use up some of the clock as we have 12.58 remaining in the game. The LSU band play it on with 12.58 remaining in the game. Alabama has the ball at its own 13-yard line. And Alabama leading by 14. Whitman. It's out to the 23-yard line. Charlie McClendon and the LSU coaching staff. Boy, that Whitman just popped through there on the first dimension of the wishbone. The quarterback Clement stepped back and gave the ball to Whitman, and he just exploded through there. Picks up 11, first down, Alabama at the 24-yard line. Bear Bryant looking for another one. It would be the 282nd of an incredible coaching career. First down from the 23. Tony Nathan gets a couple. He's running out of the eye that time. Don't use it very often, but once in a while you see him line up and uh, get the ball to Nathan. Take a look at the stats here. Alabama now has picked up 15 first downs to 11. That's a plus four in that third quarter. Total yardage now is almost even, 278 to 273. Second down, seven and a half. Uh-oh, mask. Yep. Rutledge took a shot. They got his face mask. I think it was George Cupid who grabbed on. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big 15-yarder there. Very dangerous. Most of those uh, face mask things are inadvertent, not deliberate. Let's see if we can take a look at that again. Rutledge comes down to his right on the option, fakes the ball to Whitman, continues on. He actually has no running room. And there it is right there. He really, oh, he really Oof. grabs a hold of him and jerks the helmet off of him. That was uh, George yards. Cupid there. Well, that's got to be 15 yards. That's dangerous. So Alabama has moved it out to the 42-yard line. This drive starting back on its own 13. That's the ninth time the Tigers have been penalized today for 76 yards. 
Out of the wishbone. From the 42 on first 10. Fake to Whitman. Rutledge going back. Going deep. Looking for Pugh. He's got it. Inside the 15. The 10. Down to the 6. Keith Pugh. Number 4. What a big play. I thought for a minute there was a flag back here. Now I was looking back to the left. But I guess it's all right. There's nope. some complete people coming. He made a good fake. Rutledge well, make a good fake. The Whitman stepped back. And he lost it that ball perfectly. He laid it right into Pugh's arm. Let's take a look at it from ground level. There he fakes to Whitman. Stepped back behind the blocking of Nathan. Ogilvy, Ogilvy is flying. He lost the ball up perfectly. Pugh just goes straight up the field. Watch him nestle the ball right there. And he's got a step on the defender. And here they are at the three-yard line. Gain of 53. First and goal, Alabama. At the LSU three. Rutledge back to Tony Nathan and driven down at the six-yard line by Marcus Quinn. He's a sophomore from New Orleans and a good one. They get down near that goal line. LSU stiffens up and they play everything well. Let's see if they go to the air this time or continue to try to get into the end zone via the run. Remember earlier they had third down and goal inside the one and went to the air for a touchdown. Right. Let's see whether they do it on second or third down here. Nathan figures on the day. He's going to throw it. Yep, putting it up. To Nathan. Tony puts his head down, but is stuck shy of the goal line. They actually were trying to hit the uh, Rick Neal again, but he was covered that time from a tight position. And this time he just dumped the ball off as an outlet man. Jerry Hill and George Cupid temporarily save a touchdown. Third down goal from the one. Alabama leading 24-10. Got it. And they'll stretch it again as Major Ogilvy goes in for the touchdown. So on a very big drive, a drive on which LSU had to stop Alabama, a drive that started at Alabama's 13-yard line, a drive on which the big play was the pass to keep you for 53 yards. It culminated as Major Ogilvy goes over for the touchdown, and it's 30 to 10. Alabama going on 31 with McElroy in the kick out of the hole by Kevin Jones. The tie now up by three touchdowns. 10:40 to go at Legion Field in Birmingham. Place rocking right now. Alabama 31, LSU 10. 10 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Alabama going 87 yards in a bit over two minutes to go ahead 31 to 10. And from the end zone, the kickoff by McElroy. Guy John downing it in the end zone. And LSU in arrears by 21 points right now. So we'll have very little chance to see Charles Alexander carry the ball much more today. The Heisman candidate is 13 carries for 48 yards on the afternoon so far. Well, the possession goes to Alabama. They've had the ball 64 plays. LSU only 49, and Alexander's had 13 of those. They go with Enstringer at quarterback. Steve dropping back, looking for Carson. Couldn't hold it at the 36-yard line. He was open in there. Ball was thrown just a little bit low. Second down and 10. So the frustration for the Tigers against Alabama continues. LSU has not beaten the Crimson Tide since 1970. And it doesn't look very bright for them here with 31 to 10 with 10 35 left. Second down and 10. And Springer on a roll. Oh, flags down all over the joint. Interference. As the pass was picked off, but we've got interference. And the officials calling interference. Looked like a simultaneous hit from here. Ricky Tucker comes up on this play. And it looked from here like the contact was simultaneous, but let's take a look at it. 
Alabama. Dropping off. Tucker comes back up after the ball is thrown. Let's see right there. Looks like a pretty good play there. He actually is going after the football. A thin call there. He hit Carson. Crumbly was the man who picked it off, but of course, that's all academic now as LSU has it at the 36 yard line. Ed Springer to Alexander. And he's Whoa. out of bounds, but I tell you, he really gave De Niro a shot. Talk about strong, huh? Ooh. That's where the back normally goes down in a heap. That's right. Here's Alexander for his 14th carry. Goes back down, comes back to the pocket, and just dumps the ball off as a safety valve. But here, look at that Ooh. contact there. Woo! 215 from 94. And I mean, he's a lot of man. I hope he's not hurt. He's That's seriously. De Niro. Gary De Niro, sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio, who takes All the right. shot. That's it. Get him. Out of boy. Can't believe what hit him, I'm sure. All right. Oh, he really took a shot there. Whew. Second down. And 13 now from the 34-yard line. Oh, this time they get even with Charles. Alexander takes a shot. Wayne Hamilton was there. Oh, I mean, there's some tackling out there. Ooh. Charlie on ski, though. Back to the huddle, total yardage. Well, LSU, 301 yards, but only 10 points. Well, they've had a lot of bad breaks in the ball game. That punt that led to a score. And then, of course, the interception that was run back that was nullified by the clipping penalty. Third and seven. And Springer, a lot of time. Carson can't handle it at the 43-yard line. It'll be fourth down for the Tigers. Alan Crumbly was the defender. So the Tigers will have to kick it away as John Adams comes in. Adams in front formation. Nathan. Tony Nathan drops back as the single safety for Alabama at the 20-yard line. Adams. Fair catch ball for that Nathan starts to stumble, has to let it bounce. And it's down at the six. It looked like he won the fair catch the ball, and it looked like he stumbled or stubbed his toe on the AstroTurf, and then got away from the ball, and of course, bad field position. Houston, oh, over Texas, 10 to 7, in a big one. Woof. Houston's for real, I'll tell you. Started out with that loss, I guess. Uh, one loss, then they come back and have done really a number on all the teams they've played. And will be on sale at Legion Field for getting... Ratings will be interesting this week. Oh, wow. Of course, Oklahoma beat today by Nebraska, 17-14. Alabama first down from the seven-yard line. Sealy, the quarterback. Stephen Sealy. Out to the 14-yard line. Radiker. Made the stop. Of course, Georgia won today. The Bulldogs are now 5-0. If Alabama holds on to win this one, they will be 5-0. Georgia has one game left. That would be Auburn. If they can win that game, no matter what happens to Alabama, Georgia would wind up going to the Sugar Bowl. That's exactly right. That's where the conference rules read, where the contract reads where the Sugar Bowl, Georgia would go. Of course, Alabama would still be a bowl team. Someone's got to look at that. You betcha. Second down and four. And Joe Jones carries out for what should be the first down to the 18. There's De Niro. Looks like he's all right. Took a shot from the Good for the first down. First down, Alabama at the 18-yard line, 840 remaining. Alabama leading 31 to 10. Tide led at halftime, 14 to 10. Jones again, go, 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 go. tripped up near the 20, 21 yard line. I want to go, Jones. Like Alabama, Alabama, Alabama will be content to run some of the time off that clock and if they can keep possession of it. The Bear, you know what's really ironic, Ara, is that 
Alabama could conceivably go into the polls ranked number one, assuming Penn State gets upended, perhaps by Pittsburgh. And yet they wouldn't represent their own conference really in the game is, in which they have the contract. It really is incredible the way Ooh. things are happening today. Uh, as far as the bowl games are concerned, and the national championship in the ratings. Shealy to Jones on what looked like a forward pass <laughs> at the 39-yard line. Option plus. Bill Jones. I like that Sheely, I'll tell you. I've, I've seen him the last couple of years, and he's really quick, he handles himself well, and he's a perfect guy for the triple option, the wishbone type of thing, because he comes down the line, he can read, he can pitch off, and he can also run that ball. And his passing percentage, he's only thrown 13, four, uh, 14 times, but he's completing 64% of it. Tied at the 38-yard line. Jackson. territory to the 48 yard line oh they've just worn down the tigers yep you know it's interesting coach brian has turned out an awful lot of football players here's another look at this Let's take another look there's just Sheely just turns around and deals the ball off and it's just a power sweep right everybody leading jackson's got the ball turns inside he gets some good blocking from all the people that are leading he is a strong fast runner Finally knocked down. James Britt made the tackle ball at the 48-yard line. 7.05 to go in the game. Jackson tries to go the other way. We've got a penalty marker down. And Jackson gets to the 40. You know, Al, I was saying that uh, the, there's another uh, the 17-14 uh, score of Nebraska-Oklahoma, but Coach Bryan has really turned out a lot of players and coaches. But of all the coaches that he's turned out, his record against them, the, the last 22 games that he's played with them, no, none of his former players or coaches have ever beaten him in the last 22 games. And if this game ends the way we anticipate, it'll make it 23. Now, he trains him well, but he must hold back just a little something. <laughs> he is still the master. <laughs> he sure is. We're running through the scores here, as you can see, of the top 10 teams. Well, USC holding on to the fourth. Houston. In a big Southwest Conference game, defeating Texas. Michigan handles Northwestern. And in the third quarter, Order. it's hard to believe. Oregon State 10, UCLA 10. Playing them tough. After the penalty, 15 yarder against Alabama. Searcy was the man who moved. I don't know whether. He was trying to call an audible, change the signal when he had it on a quick count or what? That's another five. And it will be first down and 30 for Alabama from the 32-yard line. Six minutes, 58 seconds remaining. Charles Charles great kick, too. Oh. He is perfect kick. Stymied today by the tough Bama defense. 31 to 10. Alabama leading first and 30 from the 32 yard line. Sheely out to the 48. Oh, is he something? He almost dealt the ball off. He makes a four yardage. It'll be second down. 15 now from the 47. Well, he's still a good football player. He didn't have as good a day today, but he didn't have the ball as often as he normally does because the tide had it. Jones. Jones. It's after the 49. Thad Minoldi made the stop. He's had a pretty good day, too. Well, there is only 13 times for 48 yards. But normally, he carries the ball an average of about 28, 29 times a game. That's where he's been getting the 122 to 124 yards every time he's out there. But when you play the Tide, I'll tell you, they're going to have that ball a few times. It's a possession type of attack, the wishbone is, and they have executed it well here today. Third down, 13 from the 49-yard line. 5.40 to go. Really? Penalty. Another penalty marker. I think it's a clip. Gets to the 46. You're on. You're on. The play on the play. Uh, 
Pitcher is Johnny Brown of Birmingham. Please call the press box. This is an emergency. Discussing the option here, LSU might possibly decline it so they can right. get the uh, ball back yes. on the punt. That's what appears that they're going to do. The call against the Crimson Tide. And we can tell you, coming up next Saturday, another NCAA doubleheader. You'll see regional games at 1230 Eastern time, followed by in most areas of the country. The big one from Los Angeles, SC, UCLA, coming your way at 4 Eastern time. Call is a holding penalty against Alabama. They've accepted it to move it back to the 38-yard line. Set up third down and 24. leading 31-10. Bama coming in number three in the country. <laughs> the, the LSU Tigers. That face, I think, mirroring the feeling among the LSU fans at this point today. Don Jacobs in at quarterback, the third quarterback Jacobs utilized by third. Alabama today. Gets it out to the 50-yard line, stopped there by Lyman White. So now the tide will kick it away. As you can see, nice the clock running with 519 to play. Jacobs is a sophomore, 6'2", about 170. Hasn't played much this year, but he didn't look too bad on that play. Another runner, probably. Woody Humphrey to punt with number 40, Marcus Quinn. Standing back at the 13-yard line. Well, I tell you, the ratings are going to be interesting this week. But <laughs> you're right out. Well, it was four big major games and conferences that were very important to who was going to be selected for bowls and who was going to win conference championships. And most of those are determined, well, are determined by this the games this afternoon. Marcus Quinn fielding at the 11-yard line and a five-yard run back out to the 16. LSU has it with 4.55 remaining in the game. Quinn receives and fails to return. Alabama out in front of LSU, 31 to 10. 455 to go, 31-10 Alabama. Want to send our best along to our colleague Chris Schenkel, suffering from a back ailment this week. Should be back until next. I told him not to lift any weights, Aaron. <laughs> He's trying to get himself ready to go. Get in shape to do what? I don't know, play some more football. <laughs> well, we wish him well. He's a great guy. First down, LSU from the 11-yard line. And Springer is the quarterback. Guy John carries out to the 20-yard line, picks up close to nine. It'll be second down, one. Contemplating our Chevrolet offensive and defensive players, the selection today, we've got several to choose from. Yes, there really is, uh, on both sides for that matter. And some great performances. Second down and one at the 20 yard line. And Springer off the fake. And incomplete. The intended receiver, Lionel Wallace, was double teamed. And Springer's pass intended for Wallace. So it'll be third down and one. Well, for our offensive player of the game today. He can go with several, but we're going to pick Major Ogilvy, number 42. Several key runs for Alabama. He made some tough, hard yards for the Tide. Kept possession of the ball. It led to scores. And I think he played an outstanding football game. He's also a great blocker. Beautiful. Scored two touchdowns today. Carried 11 times for 63 yards. Guy John. Out to the 27. 14 points on the board like uh, Major Ogilvy did. That's pretty good afternoon. Betcha. Averaged almost six yards a carry. That was hard, tough yards that he got. First and ten from the 27-yard line. Alexander met by four red shirts. Freshman Warren Lyles. In on the stop, 91. Our defensive player of the game, well, you saw his number all throughout the first half and enough times here in the second half. We've got to go with Barry Krause. Oh, you bet. He had 12 tackles and involvements, but I'll tell you, watched him for three years, and he has been a solid football player. He's 6'2", 235, and can really move. On second down and 11, we've got another marker thrown, and the pass out to the 43-yard line. 
is complete. The number 32, Orlando McDaniel. But a marker is down. Of course, for Ogilvy, our offensive player, Krause, defensive player, their name, $1,000 scholarship to Alabama's general scholarship fund from Chevrolet. Both of them very deserving. Except they got a penalty inside. See if we can decide what it is. The eligible receiver downfield decline. Oh, I see, yeah. Oh, they called. Huh? They called interference, I think. Yeah, must have. Yeah, they put that. I never saw the signal. Yes. <laughs> Did you see? Hands on his head. Oh, I, I missed that. I guess I was looking down at this board when he did. First down from the 43-yard line is Ensminger. Pumped. Now throws. And he finds Alexander down at the 26-yard line. Mike Clements made the tackle. They're still scrapping and going. I'll tell you, they're not giving up. The clock's certainly against them, but they keep moving the ball. But here's another flag. We've got now. another flag, yep. Yeah. It's amazing. They just hang in there. Charles Alexander with good speed, sending him up the field. It's, it gets deep. Oh, that's not Alexander there. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's Wallace. There's Alexander making the catch. Penalty here against LSU. Of course, it's all academic right now. The crowd is responding as they've announced the Chevrolet offensive and defensive players of the game to the crowd of about 75,000, most of whom will go home quite happy. Alabama leading 31-10, 3.18 to go. First down, 25. Tigers from the 28-yard line. Guy Jean. The 32. NCAA football, LSU, and Alabama being brought to you by the folks at Chevrolet. We invite you to come on into your Chevy dealers coast to coast for a look at an all star lineup of cars. By Mr. Goodwrench in the General Motors Parts Division. Keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. And by Transamerica, first rate service at a fair price. And by Texaco, who also brings you automotive products, quality automotive products you can trust. Second down, long. Ensminger, a lot of time. Overthrows Quintella near midfield. Incomplete. You know, uh, Al, I know that it's, it's a Heisman Trophy time, and it's a, it's a great award. We've had a couple of candidates on the field here. But by the same token, I'd like to say something in favor of, of the Outland Award as well as the Lombardi Award, which signifies outstanding linemen. Those are the guys that really do the job. They get the least amount of recognition. And there are two awards that are won by linemen during the course of the season. And there's going to be some good ones, good, great candidates during the uh, as the season comes to an end. Well put. Third down, 22 from the 31-yard line. Ensminger has it picked off at the 39-yard line for the Crimson Tide. Mike Sutton, number 26, intercepting it. So Alabama taking over, and they may keep it the rest of the way with 2.27 remaining. Due to the length of the game, we will not have our Prudential College scoreboard. We've run most of the scores by you. Our College scoreboard joke due to the length of the game, not to be seen today, but just to wrap it up again, number one got beat, Oklahoma lost to number four, Nebraska, Penn State was a winner, number two, Alabama, number three on their way to a win here. First down from the 37-yard line. John Turpin, number 35, another of the bevy of backs in the Bear Bryant stable. He just keeps running the match, doesn't he? Well, I'll tell you, in all the big games that I've seen, Bear Bryant, I'll tell you, he is an unbelievable guy to prepare teams, get them ready, ready both physically, mentally, and emotionally. And again, he's done it against a very fine LSU team. Second down and seven from the 41-yard line. 
Chris Durbin again. Takes it out to the 45. Clock continues to tick down, 147. LSU got off to a 7 0 lead as we pay on the Alabama bench. And then it looks like LSU might lead 14 0 as Chris Williams ran an interception back for a touchdown. But if you look back to one of the early play, it was a penalty on that run back. As we look at other scores here from the West Coast. Alabama was able to tie it at seven, go ahead at the half, 14 to 10, and the second half has belonged to the Crimson. Tony. Of course, also that fumble uh, by Williams that led to another touchdown for Alabama, which really put the game out of sight for him. Third and three. There's Quintella. The split back for LSU. Last play. Netting a yard out to the 46, so Alabama will have to kick with 56, 55, 54 seconds remaining in the game. Woody Humphrey in the punt, but Alabama will take a timeout here. Timeout called by the Tide as you look at Rutledge. 51 seconds to go. Alabama leading 31 to 10. 51 seconds remaining. Alabama ahead by three touchdowns. We thank our statistician. Researcher George Hill, Bill Friel, coming down from Philadelphia to handling the spotting today. His number 40, Marcus Quinn, is back to accept the kick by Humphrey. A good kick. Quinn calls for the fair catch, but lets it bounce. Oh, and it's down oh, oh. at the two. Wow, that oh. ball. That had backspin on the ball. Looked like it was going into the end zone flying, and it just flat out stopped. Check out the Trojans. They lead Washington 28 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Next week, most of you will see SC UCLA at 4 Eastern time. And UCLA has picked up a field goal in the third quarter. They now lead Oregon State 13 to 10. And a tough one at Corvallis. Marker down. Well, the there's been play. a lot of penalties yeah. out here this afternoon on both sides. Personal foul declined by Alabama. Personal foul against LSU, Alabama, and they start at the three-yard line. Wow. Personal foul against LSU. LSU, three. First the big one, LSU. number eight, Houston. Over number six, Texas. Ten to seven. Some shifting and some juggling upcoming in the rankings this week. And Penn State had to struggle, apparently, to yes, they did. get their win. Finally pulled it out over North Carolina State. Hence Finger. Giving it to Leroy Jones, number nine. His first carry of the day out to the 10. This program is special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is Alabama's number one station, TV6 in Birmingham. 18, 17, 16 seconds remaining. Alabama will be nine and one. LSU will be 6-2. Could be the final play of the game. Enschminger complete out to the 17-yard line. And that'll do it. The catch made by Jude Hernandez. It's all over. The Bears won another. <laughs> How many rides he had? Al Michaels for Arab Barsegian saying so long from Legion Field in Birmingham. Again, the final score was Alabama 31, LSU 10.